Hey, this is Benny Johnson, and welcome to your second iOS development tutorial. In today's episode, we're going to be diving into Xcode and start using it. But before I do this, I just want to make sure that all my viewers are on the right page, because in the last episode, I went through all the requirements you actually need to start developing iOS applications, and hopefully you're running Mac OS X line and you've already got Xcode installed. If you don't, go back to my previous tutorial where I detailed how to do that, and then come back to this one. So as you can see, I've actually got Xcode in my dock, and I know most people will not have that already. So to go ahead and launch Xcode, just go over to your launch pad in Lion, and you want to select the icon with the hammer and blue print. So go ahead and select that, because that's Xcode, and that will launch it up. And I recommend you that you dock it like I have, just for convenience, because you will be using it quite often. So once you launch up Xcode, you'll be presented with this dialog. It says, Welcome to Xcode. You have four options. Create a new Xcode project. This just basically is obvious. It creates a new project, so you can work on your um, iOS application or Mac application. Connect to a repository, learn about using Xcode, and finally go to the Apple developer portal. Over here in the right, we have our recent projects, which gives us quick and easy access to any projects we may be working on at the time and this just basically allows us to open our projects and just jump in without actually browsing the file menu so this is a real cool feature and I use it quite often as well as the create a new Xcode project shortcut now I'm going to go ahead and create a new Xcode project so I'm going to select that and once you do that you'll be presented with the actual IDE interface. Now if you don't know what IDE stands for, it stands for Integrated Development Environment. And this is basically just a fancy term for a piece of software that provides you all the tools for developing applications. Now this provides us tools for designing, coding, and testing our applications. And that's basically what IDE is. Now, the first thing I noticed when I actually went ahead and used Xcode was it looks very familiar to iTunes. It looks very similar. And as you can see, we've got this LCD type element here, as well as these play and stop buttons. So it does look like iTunes, but it is not a music player. It is an integrated development environment, and it has nothing to do with iTunes. I think it's just the way um, Apple likes to design their software, but it's an interesting fact. So, once you launch up and create a new project, you'll be prompted to select a template for that actual project. And you can select from these categories here, we've got the iOS categories, which obviously is used for iOS um, templates, and we also have these Mac OS X template base here. So we will not be using the Mac OS X templates because this is an iOS development tutorial but you can go check that out if you want. But most of the time we'll be using the iOS application template folder and all these templates basically um, you'll use them for different projects but most of the time we'll be using this single view application. Now you're probably wondering uh, what are these templates and what's the difference between them so I'll go through them. So the first thing is the master detail application and I'm just going to give you an example of an application on iOS that actually uses that format and the best example I can think of is the actual settings application. You select from a menu then you drill down into further and further detail. And you can notice that it actually does look like an iPad setting screen. You have, you know, your categories here and you, then you'll have your subcategories and so on and so forth. The OpenGL game, I actually haven't checked out, but basically I presume it is just a template to get you started creating iOS games. And we may go into this later in the future, but for now we're going to leave that one alone. Next we have the 
page based application and the best example I can give you for that is the actual iBooks application and if you can recall you when you turn the page it actually does that nice curl visual effect and that's probably the best example I can give you for that template. Next we have the single view application as I said we'll most of the time we'll be using this but this basically just gives us a simple starting point for creating our projects. Down here we have our tabbed application and the best example I can give you for that is the actual music application where you can use those tabs down the bottom to select artists, albums and songs. Next we have the utility application and another example I can give you for this is the actual weather application you know on the iPhone and iPod touch that details the actual what the weather is but you can also go into information down the bottom there's like a little icon that you can click to actually edit where you get that weather data from and finally we have the empty application which just basically gives you a very 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 basic template it's basically empty and you have to build it from start to finish but we will not touch that so as I said, we're going to be using the single view application probably 90% of the time. So what I'm going to do is select this and go next. Next you'll be prompt prompted for some details. Now it asks me for the product name. So product name is just basically a fancy word for whatever you're going to call the project. So to start off with, we're going to do a really cool application called Hello. No, it's not Hello World it's Hello Universe because everyone does Hello World so I thought I might do something different and make sure you don't have any spaces in there because it doesn't like it. Next we have the company identifier and this is probably the most complex option it kinda threw me off when I first saw it but basically it's just an identifier to uh, make sure that the apps applications with the same name uh, don't cross each other, they can be um, different. So you can put anything in there, I've just put edu.self and you can put that in or commonly done is if you own a domain name you put that backwards and that can be your company identifier. You don't actually have to own a company or a domain name for this. Next we have class prefix and this is just basically some text that is introduced um, before the actual file names of our projects. So it just extends the file names of our projects. I can't really show it off to you, but you can type something in there. It doesn't really affect your project. Next we have our device family choice and we can select iPhone, iPad and Universal application. Most of the time I'm going to select iPhone. You can do iPad and I will be doing iPad later in this series. Next we have use storyboards and you want to untick that for this application but I will be going through that. And we also have use automatic reference counting and this option is just a feature that um, Apple recently announced for their new Xcode project before you had to actually uh, release and delete all your data um, at the end of the application but basically automatic reference counting um, takes that step from you and puts it onto the actual builder so you don't have to worry about that and we have unit testing just leave that unticked and we'll go next alright so once you've done that you're going to be prompted to put your project in a folder so I'm going to go to desktop and basically I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it iOS projects you can put it anywhere you like, just make sure you know where it is and go create. It will create a folder in there. Alright, so th that's the end of this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll actually be getting and building our application. So I hope you enjoyed that and please remember to subscribe and support my channel. See you guys later.